Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Table Talk. I'm your host, Jake Combs, and tonight we should be finishing our final painting of the Grot Bombers from Aeronautica Imperialis, and then we also have the Grot Bombs themselves, doing little touch-ups on those. The main thing we're going to be looking at doing is just uh, the final detail work around the cockpits, uh, touch up a couple of spots that were missed during the initial uh, coloring. And then hopefully get and get the washes done. And by then, especially in the black areas, maybe do a little uh, dry brushing too. So definitely got a little bit in store today. Let me go ahead and get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is on the scrap bomber, uh, several spots, uh, the contrast paint kind of pulled away from it. And so we're going to go over those spots again to get the ones that have faded. And so specifically, we'll be using the Black Templar, or Black Templar contrast paint now. Uh, and with contrast paints, if you notice, uh, you can, on the bottoms of most of them, you can usually see uh, some pigment there. And it takes a lot of work to shake it up enough to get all of that out. Now, already just a little bit of shaking because I've agitated it enough times. Uh, it is coming up a little bit, but not perfect. Now, I have seen some people using, oops, using uh, paint agitators. And ah, thought I had a good stand here that would not keep flipping the phone, but does not appear to be the case. Let's see. Okay, there we go. So as I was saying, uh, you can, there are paint agitators out there you can get, and I actually plan on getting one for myself in the relatively near future and then with them you basically just put the paint pot on it directly and then let it vibrate all the pigment around for you in a very quick fashion and then you won't have to look goofy while shaking paint anymore. All right. So it looks like the main touch-ups on this one are done. Check the black on this one, see if there's anywhere we missed. Apparently while it was drying, it picked up a little bit of cat hair, but thankfully most of that blew away. And, ah, stupid stand. Okay. Now hopefully we won't shake things too bad. Now, if any of you notice, this brush I have is rather destroyed. Um, so one thing that you can do is you can use a, an actual brush cleaner. I prefer the uh, the B and J, the Masters brush cleaner and preserver. Um, so when I first got this brush, I picked up this cleaner at the time. And at the, when I first bought it, I couldn't really find any videos on how to use it properly. And so I didn't really get around to using it. And fast forward about mm, almost three years that this one brush has been going for me. And finally decided to stop throwing away other brushes because this one's lasted longer than 
pretty much any of them and figure out how to actually clean it properly. And so once I did that, uh, this brush actually looked almost as bad. And after using the, uh, the cleaner has actually come back more to life than uh, I ever expected it to. Uh, but I will be right back so I can let the dog in and then we'll continue from there. everything that you're going to paint the right brush makes all the difference and oh, that one's a little too frayed for what I want to do here we go so this one it's one of my favorite brushes it's actually the insane detail wargamer brush from army painter um, it's got a very unique uh, handle compared to most others. And then with it, it's a super fine tip brush. And this one actually was quite frayed and completely came back to life with that brush cleaner. I should have taken some pictures of uh, the before and after for the exact same brush because this is the only one of this type I've ever owned. And I highly recommend it. Love the handle type. Feels much more steady. Where other brushes kind of curve a little bit because of their round nature. This one, as long as you know how to hold a pencil properly, you can hold it properly. And so in the meantime, while I'm working on this, have any of you guys checked out the, the official Nerd Cult site? Uh, we finally got the bulk of it uh, flushed out. We've even got articles for every category already posted. And we've, now I've already got about 13 to 15 more articles that I'm actually working on on the back end to get us going. Um, And we actually just posted a review of the of one of the uh, Black Library anthologies uh, for their horror line, which was a lot of fun. And actually, I believe that article goes up next week if I remember right all right so we got the the canopy done around the windows the framework there just got to do a little touch-up of the uh, magos purple but before I do that because I don't like switching brushes in the middle of a task we're gonna go ahead and block out these windows So far, I still have not received the official embargo information on the new box games that are going to be available, uh, specifically Blitz Bowl Season 2, uh, Crypt Hunters, and Space Marine Adventures, which I know are going to be available at uh, Barnes & Noble, as well as uh, other... Uh, I guess bookstores mostly. And I love how they're branching the franchise out or the IP out to 
bring in new fans and these games at least with the first season uh, have been a great way to do that looking at the new season so far just looking at the pictures and what items they've shared on uh, the Warhammer community page have all been very cool uh, so definitely looking forward to giving those games a try blocked out and just a quick look at the grots okay don't really see anything oh, well this one's got a little steering wheel that wasn't painted before or some sort of steering stick thing you always want to try to do when you're painting is you know paint your brushes like in single strokes in one direction because if you change it up quite a bit you do run the risk of uh, fraying them faster So we're done with the black. <clears throat> now some of you may notice my drink I keep taking a sip of. Uh, no, we are not sponsored by Mod Pizza, um, but I am a huge fan of their Blackberry Lemonade. It is quite delicious. But that's mostly because I can't drink anything with caffeine. So it's one of the few drinks that they actually offer that don't have caffeine in them. All right. Okay, there we 
go. Because as I was turning it over, I did notice a couple other touch-up spots that needed to be done. Uh, here we go, right on the one of the wings for the Black Templar. Now, as I mentioned, some of the contrast paints do tend to pull up a little bit after you use them. So it is necessary to sometimes do a second coat where with contrast paints, you typically don't need to do more than one coat with some of the paints themselves. Next step is going over with some Nolan oil over the purple to really bring out those details. And then over the Black Templar, Nolan oil isn't going to do a lot for you simply because there's already so much black on it that it's just going to blend right in.
So one thing I always like to do, especially with orcs in 40k, is make it look as grimy, as dirty as possible. Uh, rust is always a good thing uh, because pretty much everything they use is made of the junk of others. So you can always do some really cool conversion stuff using pieces of other types of ships as well because it would be completely within uh, their lore to do that. I mean, really, if you think about it, orcs are really just the most environmental friendly of the species because they don't waste anything. Sometimes you do get a little too much ink in some spots, so give it a quick blow of air, we'll get most of that out. Okay, so now I'm done with this brush. Now that we've done our washes, we're ready to do our dry brushing over the Black Templar. Now, when I want to do a kind of a more of a white highlight uh, with a dry brush, I almost always go for Wolthuan Gray, uh, just simply because most of the darker colors have kind of uh, some subtle blue hints to them already. And Wolthuan Gray, is more of a, a white kind of with a little hint of blue mixed in so it blends very well uh, as a highlight uh, basically to make some of the more metal pieces uh, stand out Then also with the dry brush to keep it holding its shape, you want to dry brush basically with the flat of the brush in one constant direction. And then you can flip the brush over 180 degrees and do the opposite side of it. So 
So that way you use all the paint that you have in the brush so it doesn't accumulate too much. So one thing that's always good to do too is run the dry brush on your fingers just to make sure that you got most of the excess paint off because you want to have almost none of it coming off of the brush when you go to dry brush. So most people that do dry brushing, you'll notice that when they're painting, they usually have a lot of paint on their index finger because they're using it to test the dry brush. Okay, now it's time to clean the brush. And then with the, you can clean the dry brush, you, at least for me, I always like to get it very wet and then nice even strokes with the flat of the brush. Flip it 180 degrees and do it the other side. Do it a few times. And that way you kind of work the soap in there. Rinse it in your cup a bit and then work it again. And the soap will actually help break up any paint that's stuck uh, where the bristles meet the handle. So that way you keep its shape and you don't build up any paint. Now, usually by the first or second session of using dry brush, uh, this dry brush would look more like this detail brush. And while that works well for a, a, a dry brush, um, I wanted to get more out of my dry brush because the last one I had, it was probably about maybe at most six months old. And that was with me at the time painting about three hours a week. Uh, my paintings moved up to uh, closer to 15 hours a week right now. And so I knew I was gonna go through brushes much faster, uh, especially uh, the dry brush. And so it's ever since I started using that uh, about three months ago, and it still almost has the perfect shape. And uh, very little paint has adhered to any of the brushes, uh, some a little bit towards the tip. I um, haven't been able to clean that off yet, but I do know that if I were to let it sit in some uh, isopropyl alcohol 
and then use the cleaner that would actually get the rest of it off and help break the rest down so that we have a perfectly clean brush and it's just a matter of taking the time to do that um, now the grout bombs they are officially done very happy with how they came out um, you can definitely get a very very good looking paint job without having to use uh, really much time and effort due to uh, uh, using contrast paints. Now next time we are going to start the base colors for our tow ships. We've got two of the, I believe they're called barracudas, and three of the smaller ships, whatever they're called. And for the most part, we're going to go do the entire thing in Blood Angels Contrast Red. And then we're going to do some washes, we're going to do some highlights, and then probably pick maybe like black or something else to uh, maybe go around the engines or uh, some of the big cannons or something like that. Haven't quite decided uh, which colors are going where, um, but I expect these to mostly be done really in the the first session um, unless of course we're doing an unboxing at that time and if we are then uh, we'll probably just paint them red let them dry and then uh, revisit later and then that's it for tonight uh, but before I go, I do want to mention that uh, in the near future, uh, Games U, um, our friends and longtime sponsors, um, they are actually working towards reopening uh, gaming in the store, uh, which is pretty awesome. Um, from what I understand, a couple stores in Arizona have done that already. <sighs> Forgive me. And so they're looking to do it right. Now, they are gonna require some signups when people join, um, obviously uh, you know, absolving them of any sort of liability uh, due to uh, coronavirus or anything like that. And then you know, it's maintain a minimum six foot rule uh, from each other. And then also, if you get any terrain out, you have to check it out and then uh, basically help clean and put it back. So that way uh, everything's sanitized for the next user. So it's a really cool setup. Uh, really glad that uh, I got to talk to them the other day and find out what they had planned. And so definitely something to look forward to. Um, you know, don't know if it's going to be, <sighs> excuse me, within the next week or two, or maybe even longer. I know that the original plan was Saturday last week, but from what I'm hearing, uh, that did not happen yet, and they're still looking at doing it soon. Um, but the only other thing I have too is uh, Games Workshop, um, this, the company that supplies us all these awesome miniatures to share with you guys. They uh, just had their big preview this past weekend, um, and we have uh, new Orlock members. We have, uh, can't remember what it was for Horse Heresy. Um, I think it was maybe Sanguinis, uh, one of the Primarchs. Then we also have um, my personal favorite, the new Wargame Catacombs box set is coming out. Basically a new starter since the first starter is so hard to find now and uh, out of print. And then we had um, the final Blackstone Fortress expansion. Uh, I believe it was called Ascension, uh, which had some guardian drones. Looks pretty cool. <sighs> so some very cool stuff coming on the horizon. Definitely worth checking it out. And uh, there's also a new season of Blood Bowl coming. Um, obviously there's a new season of Blitz Bowl and they actually just announced the new Blood Bowl 3 video game as well so definitely uh, 
a bit of something for everyone there. Uh, definitely a lot of fun to play. I've always enjoyed the Blood Bowl games. Looking forward to uh, the next installment. Um, but yeah, that's it for me tonight. Thank you guys for watching. And uh, as always, you have a great night.